Hello everyone, my name is Christian and today we will talk about bicycle fit and geometry. If you are in the market for a new bike, I would like to help you choose one that is the right size for you. Bikes come in many shapes and sizes. There are two ways to describe a bike's size. By wheel size. This is a number approximately equal to the outside diameter of the inflated tire expressed either in inches or millimeters. Common inch sizes are 20, 24, 26, 27.5 and 29 inches, while common metric sizes are 650B and 700C. The wheel and tire size are molded or printed on the side wall of the tire. This picture is from another wheel. By frame size. This is a number or letter that, in most cases, indicates the seat tube length. As before, there are inch sizes, like 15 inches, 17 inches, etc., or metric sizes, 55 centimeters, 58 centimeters, etc. Sometimes the seat tube length matches the frame size number exactly, other times it doesn't. Frames can be diamond-shaped, regular, or step-through. A certain bike model can be offered in a single size or in multiple sizes. Usually, the cheaper models are offered in one size, like this Schwinn Kedzi. The more expensive brand models, like this Trek 820, are offered in multiple sizes. Sometimes, the wheel size is the same across all frame sizes. Other times, there are smaller wheels on the smaller frames and larger wheels on the larger frames. Usually, the established brands provide extensive frame geometry and component information. They also recommend a rider height range for each size. One size models, however, come with little information, most often the recommended rider height range. One quick observation, some bikes mostly road and older mountain bikes like this one, have a horizontal top tube. Others, newer mountain bikes, hybrid bikes, etc., have a sloped top tube. The slope can vary widely. Here is the Trek 820 together with the older mountain bike. The older bike has a longer seat tube, 23 inches, but the standover height is about the same. If these two bikes seem large, Take a look at this old road bike with a 27-inch frame, 10-inch head tube and 36 and 3 quarter inches standover height. The elements of a frame are seat tube, top tube, head tube, down tube, bottom bracket shell, seat stays and chain stays. The fork is not part of the frame but it's included in the dimensional diagrams because the front wheel center, together with the rear wheel center, define the horizontal line from which several dimensions are measured. The fit between the rider and his or her bike is not determined just by the frame and wheels, but by other components too and how these components are adjusted. Let's take a look at the dimensions that contribute to this fit. Overall frame dimensions, seat tube and head tube angles, frame and wheel dimensions, seat tube, fork and stem dimensions, handlebar dimensions. Here's a more detailed view of a riser handlebar And here's a view of a drop handlebar. Then crank arm, pedal and rider body dimensions. To put everything together, I created this calculation table where the above dimensions are defined, input and or calculated. The numbers you see here are for the Trek 820 XL bike. I hope you will be able to replicate this table with the information I provided. If you are successful, your numbers will be same as mine. All values are in millimeters. If you prefer to use inches, divide each dimension by 25.4. 
Starting at the top and going all the way down, input all the numbers in the blue font cells. If something is missing, estimate or measure the actual parts when you have the chance. Input the formulae in the black or green font cells in the fourth column as they are written in the third column. Use cell references or defined names. For example, use D4 to refer to dimension A or assign the name A to cell D4 and use it as, as such in the subsequent formulae. The green values are calculated but can be overridden by actual measures. When completed, the table will output the following calculated dimensions. 1. The standover height N and the clearance CLR between the rider and the top surface of the top tube at a certain offset L from the bottom bracket center. Most manufacturers do not specify at what offset the standover height is measured. This doesn't matter if the top tube is horizontal, but makes a big difference if the tube is sloped. Some will specify the standover height right above the bottom bracket or close to it. However, when you strand the bike, you have to clear the seat, so your body will sit at a certain distance ahead of the bottom bracket. This distance depends on the seat, the frame size and geometry, and other factors, but I found out 150 millimeters is a good number to start from. In the table, you can set L to any value that seems reasonable to you. The calculated standover height, N, applies to diamond-shaped frames only. The frame has to be standard-shaped with straight tubes. If the frame has an odd design, measure the standover height directly on the bike or make adjustments for the shape. 2. The overall reach AB, or the distance between the saddle point A, a point slightly below the seat surface located on the seat post axis, and the handlebar grip point projected on the central plane of the bike, B. This distance will account for adjustments to the seat position, fore aft, and handlebar rotation. The nominal, no rotation, position of a riser type handlebar is that for which the handlebar front plane is parallel to the head tube axis. For a drop or bullhorn handlebar, the nominal, no rotation position is that for which the top plane is perpendicular to the head tube axis. 3. The adjusted overall reach AB adjusted. This dimension accounts for the difference between the handlebar length between hands as placed on the grips and the chest width. A longer handlebar will force the rider to spread his arms apart having the same effect as an increase in the overall reach. The difference is zero if the arms are parallel when hands are placed on the grips. 4. Leaning angle, epsilon. This is the angle between a horizontal line and the AB line. It tells us if the rider will lean forward or backward from his seat. Forward leaning requires the arms to support more weight, but allows for faster, more aggressive riding. Backward leaning puts more weight on the saddle and the rider's stance is more relaxed, but the aerodynamic resistance is higher. 5. Pedal reach AE. This is the horizontal distance between the saddle point A and the pedal axis point E when the crank arm is horizontal and in a forward position. When you place the ball of your foot on the pedal in this position, your knee should be above the pedal. If not, the saddle can be adjusted forward or rearward, but the adjustment is limited. So how can these numbers be used in a practical way? First, look at the clearance CLR. A bike ridden on paved roads should provide at least one inch of clearance, while a bike ridden on rough roads or trails should provide at least two inches of clearance. You should decide how much clearance you need or are comfortable with. This tool will tell you if the bike you're looking at meets your requirement or not. Second, the pedal reach AE will tell you if you need to, and can, shift the saddle fore-aft to put yourself in the proper position relative to the pedals. 
the adjustment is limited to about plus minus 10 millimeters or so. Any adjustment will affect the overall reach and has to be entered as saddle adjustment Z. For the initial assessment of the bike, leave the saddle adjustment to zero, with the saddle centered in the support bracket. Third, look at the overall reach AB, adjusted overall reach AB adjusted, and leaning angle epsilon before any saddle or handlebar adjustments. Compare them with a bike that you already have and fits you well. If you don't have such a bike, sit on any bike saddle and try to stretch to the approximate reach and leaning angle indicated by the table. If that seems uncomfortable, look at a different bike size or model. If you think it's close but not perfect, consider what adjustments can be made before changing components. You may move the saddle fore aft, rotate the handlebar and, possibly, move the stem up and down the fork tube. A quill stem is easy to raise or lower. A threadless headset requires spacers being moved from the bottom to the top of the stem or vice versa. Fourth, if you like a certain bike but the above dimensions don't seem right or you already own the bike, consider what components you may change to improve the fit. Most commonly you will change the stem and or the handlebar even though this may affect how the bike feels and handles. If you want to go further, you may also replace the wheels. Smaller wheels lower the standover height and allow the use of thicker tires, but they also place the bottom bracket closer to the ground. In that case, you have to be careful not to hit the ground with the pedals while riding. And last, you can use this tool to compare different bike models and sizes. You will be surprised to see that a bike that is called extra large by a manufacturer, for example, may be actually smaller than a bike called large by another manufacturer. Let's measure the bike and see if the calculations are accurate. The actual wheel radius is 13 and 1 8 inches or 333.4 millimeters. The measured standover height is 33 and 11 16 inches or 855.7 millimeters pretty close to the calculated 856 mm and significantly higher than the 827 mm indicated by Trek. The overall reach is 656 mm and the leaning angle is 2.2 degrees. Since it's hard to measure the overall reach directly, let's look at the AD length. The calculated value is 713 mm. The measured value is 28 and 1 8 inches or 714 millimeters. Again, very close. When I sit on this bike, I feel the handlebar is too far and I'm leaning too much forward. Also, the pedal reach is a little short, my knee is ahead of the pedal axle. So first I should adjust the saddle by moving it back, let's say 9 millimeters. In the table, I change the saddle adjustment Z from 0 to minus 9 millimeters. This also requires a slight lowering of the saddle post into the seat tube since the AC distance does not change. The pedal reach increases from 385 to 394 millimeters. The alpha 1 angle decreases from 73 to 72.3 degrees. The overall reach increases from 656 to 664 millimeters and the leaning angle increases from 2.2 degrees to 2.5 degrees. The overall reach is even longer than before, so how do I fix this? The easiest thing to do is replace the stem. After a few trials I decided on a 90 millimeters long stem with 35 degrees rise. When these numbers are plugged into the table, the overall reach is lowered from 664 to 629 millimeters and the leaning angle increases from 2.5 degrees to 5.2 degrees. Much better. The question is, in retrospect, what if I had ordered a large size instead of an extra large? Some time ago I had the chance to try a large size and felt I was leaning too much forward. 
Indeed, if I populate the table with the numbers for large and the saddle shift of minus 9 millimeters, I get an overall reach of 650 millimeters and a leaning angle of 0 0.4 degrees. The standover height, however, is 828 millimeters. Track says 799 millimeters. This would have given me an extra 28 millimeters of clearance, good for rough trail riding. But what if I change the stem too? Let's try using a 100 millimeter long, 35 degrees stem. With this stem, the overall reach becomes 630 millimeters and the leaning angle becomes 4.2 degrees. Very close to the latest setup on the extra large, but with a much better standover clearance. If you shop online and don't have access to actual bikes, use the info provided by the manufacturers on their websites to populate as much of the tables as you can. For dimensions that are not available, use estimates based on pictures or from other similar bikes. Here's a way to estimate dimensions from a picture. Zoom in the picture on screen. Using a ruler, measure the length or width of a known component. In this case, the seat post diameter. It comes to 24.5 millimeters. Then measure the unknown dimension, in this case, the frame dimension J. It comes at 21 millimeters. From the specifications, we know the seat post diameter is 29.2 millimeters. The actual J dimension is then 29.2 times 21 divided by 24.5, which equals 25 millimeters, right on spot with the actual measurement. In the end, even if results are approximate, it's something that you can start from. But if you have the chance to try the bike before buying it, don't hesitate. With that, I wish you the best in your search for your perfect bike. Thank you for watching this video. Please press the like button if you found it useful and subscribe to my new channel, The 10 Minute Point, for future informational videos. Have a great day!